What's up guys, Kudokun here, and today I've got a few updates for you. Now, I've got a couple of updates, I've got an apology to make, and the way I'm going to section this off is this. Uh, there's some very personal stuff going on in my life, I will do a channel update for the people who don't care about my personal life, and then after that I will get into some very personal stuff. So, you know, if you're somebody who just wants to know what's going on with the channel, then you should be able to get out here pretty quickly. I'm only going to give about a couple of minutes worth of updates. And then if you're somebody who watches regularly and you actually care about my personal life and stuff, I don't normally go into this kind of stuff, but this is sort of a very important thing that regards the channel, so I'll get into that. So, let's get right on to it. First of all, a huge apology about the way that the harem challenge went. I'm very sorry. This last weekend we were supposed to do the last day of it, and I feel really awful about having to cancel it without giving anybody any notice. Please trust me when I say that there's some very important stuff going on in my personal life that prevented me from doing it. But if you just bear with me, we are going to reschedule it. We will be doing it the last week of this month. I didn't want to do it this week because I want to give people who weren't a part of the harem challenge or who don't want any part of the harem challenge a chance to actually interact on the stream. I don't really want to keep them waiting much longer. So the way it will work is like this. Uh, the last week of this month, we will do the last day of the harem challenge. And then next month, you'll get to decide the Weiss content if you are the winner. But speaking of Weiss content, this month we are going to start doing the weekly Weiss Swartz videos. I was supposed to give the topic of the weekly Weiss Swartz videos for the first one to the people who won the uh, harem challenge. Again, really sorry. You're just going to have to trust me on this one. It, it was... It's been quite a week. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. So, uh, instead, what we are going to do is get started with Shakugan no Shana this month. Uh, I hope you're excited. It's one of my all-time low-key favorite animes, so I'm really hyped to see what happens. For people who don't know about the Weekly Wise Swartz thing, pretty much we're going to do four videos on it this month. Uh, probably a trial deck review, a set review, and then two deck reviews. And then during the card games and chills, I will be showcasing some decks or deck ideas from the set. So, something to look forward to. On the gaming side of things, there's a couple of games coming out this month that I'm really excited to talk about. Uh, Detective Pikachu, for one, obviously. <sighs> I'm really excited for that game. You guys have no idea. So a review of that will be coming out this month, and also a review of the new Atelier game. Fun fact, just learned how to pronounce Atelier like two days ago. <laughs> I've been calling it Atelier this entire time, but no, it's Atelier. Okay, that's fixed. And the last thing we'll talk about on the gaming front is streaming. We've tried the streaming thing a few times now, and I've had a few ideas for streaming. It never really seems to pan out, but I do every once in a while get some people on a stream who will ask me to do video game streams. Uh, this last, not this last week obviously, but the week before it, the last time we did a Card Games and Chill, somebody asked me if I would stream Monster Hunter. I'm not opposed to that idea. I do play like two or so hours worth of games every day, and I could easily just kind of hook up the capture card and stream what I'm playing. I really don't mind that at all. But if I start doing that, there's a couple of things that come up. The first being, I don't know if I want to do all that on my main channel. Honestly, I could do a stream every single day if I really wanted to, you know. I have that kind of free time. But the thing is, if I make like one or two videos a week, and then on top of that are seven game streams, not everyone's going to care about that kind of stuff. People are going to be really put off by that if they come by and there's like one new video up and seven streams that cover that new content. So I've always played around with the idea of maybe doing a second channel. I've already got UTR Gaming reserved. UTR Gaming standing for Under the Radar Gaming. Don't worry about it. It's an old Kudokun thing. So I could do streaming and put it on a new channel. Another option is I could actually move my gaming stuff to Twitch. Uh, Twitch is really booming right now. Um, people are making a lot of money on it. People are getting a lot of views on it. It would be great exposure for the channel if I moved to another platform. It's something that I've always played around with. The only reason I haven't is some of my bigger fans don't really want to go to Twitch. They want everything to stay on YouTube. So I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do there. I might do something where I stream on Twitch and then I make highlights and put the highlights on YouTube. They just don't know yet because there are some people who want to watch that stuff live and 
you know, it's a <laughs> bit of a bit of a problem that I've got there. Gaming could be something that I stream pretty soon. I just haven't really got it worked out yet. It'll either be gaming on this channel or it'll be gaming on another channel or it'll be gaming on Twitch and I'll just put highlights or whatever on YouTube. So that's pretty much all for the updates. I don't really want to announce a bunch of stuff because uh, due to the stuff that's going on in my personal life, I, I can't really promise a whole lot of stuff. And again, I'm really sorry for that. Until this personal stuff gets resolved, it's going to put a huge damper on actually getting content out there. I cannot be more sorry about this, but it's just kind of life. But a quick recap, uh, very, very sorry about the harem challenge and how it ended. We will be doing it again the end of this month, so if you didn't get a chance to compete, or if you want a chance to get that first place prize to choose next month's Y Swartz content, then at the end of the month, end of the month, we'll be getting to it. Game reviews of the new Atelier and Detective Pikachu game, possible game streams, if I can figure out what I want to do with it, and this month's Weiss Swartz topic set will be Shakugan no Shana, so I really hope you're looking forward to it. Now, from this point on in the video, I don't have any more updates for you, so thank you all so much for watching, but I will be getting on to some personal stuff, getting on to the more uh, private Kudo-kun manners here. Now, this section of the video is going to be meant for people who've been following me for a while, who talk to me, and uh, they sort of have gotten to know me a little bit, and uh, I need to talk about some stuff, get some stuff off of my chest, because it's stuff that could affect the channel, could affect my content for the channel, so I really want to talk to you guys about it. Now, the first thing going on right now is one of my teeth is really messed up. <laughs> like, you can obviously tell I don't have the greatest teeth in the world. Uh, I never really went to the dentist when I was a kid. I don't really know what to do about that now. Uh, I don't think I really started taking care of my teeth until I started dating girls for obvious reasons. So I, I didn't really start uh, really taking care of my teeth until I was like 20. I know, which is awful. It is really awful. Kids, don't do that to yourself. But that's just kind of what I ended up with. And uh, one of my teeth in the back, my wisdom tooth, I think it's called, I guess I bit into something hard or something and I, I really messed it up and it is driving me crazy <laughs> like like i can feel i can feel it right now it, it's sort of like a pain switch that just kind of flips off and flips on again and i've tried every remedy under the book i keep just shoveling painkillers and stuff in my mouth and nothing is working it is so awful i would prefer being sick i would prefer having the flu i would prefer anything to having this toothache right now because it's absolutely killing me and it is killing me at completely random times it'll be like midnight and it'll hurt so bad i can't go to sleep but then like at three o'clock in the afternoon it'll feel like i don't even have a toothache i don't really know what to do about it i need to see a dentist but uh due to reasons i don't really have the finance to see a dentist right now Next month, I will go see a dentist and I'll get it fixed. But it makes it really hard to do videos because talking makes it pulse and hurt more. So that's kind of a problem. And it also makes it a bit harder to stream, but I'm sure I can figure something out for the streaming. The second big thing that's going on right now is uh, an old friend of mine has come back to, uh, to do something pretty awful to me, in my opinion. So um, just to sort of be as blunt about it as I can, when I first moved out here where I am now, I moved in with a friend and his girlfriend, and it was a bad idea. <laughs> I, I knew from the start it was a bad idea, but I was sort of under the impression that we were strong enough friends because we've been friends for so long that we would be able to handle it. We absolutely couldn't handle it. Uh, his girlfriend and I don't get along at all. And every time her and I got into something, it was immediately a 2v1 every single time, all right? Dude's going to choose his chick before he chooses me. It's just kind of how it is. I completely understand it, but it was a really, really bad idea. So when I left, I decided not to live there the last month that we had the lease on the apartment we had. So I ended up skipping out on one month of rent, which is about $500. Like I think they just rounded it to $500. Now, the obvious thing to say here is, oh, Kudo, you, you owe them a month of rent, just pay the pay the $500 and everything should be fine. The problem is, he's coming to me now, and he's demanding not only that month's worth of rent, but he's also claiming that I went five months without paying any rent, which is just a ridiculous claim. Yeah, I would... I, okay, okay, I'm not the best when it comes to, like, keeping my bills and stuff intact, but... 
let me just assure you all, I did not go five months, half of a year practically, without paying any rent. Somebody would have said something. It's a ridiculous claim, but the problem is, the circle of friends that we grew up with, uh, I, I love them to death, and I think somewhere deep down they really love me, but I just, uh, I don't get along with them the same way that I used to. Essentially what's happened here is, this claim that he's made, that I owe him five months worth of rent, uh, he's already spread it amongst everybody that I know, so I'm pretty isolated right now. I, I don't really have anybody from my old circle of friends that's on my side on this. Uh, they all believe that I owe them money because they weren't there. There's really nothing I can do about it at this point, and the problem that I have is his personality. My friend is the kind of person who goes into every single competition making himself the underdog. Like, if he goes into a gaming competition or something, he'll just say, Oh, I already know I'm gonna lose. Oh, I, I, I already know the other person's gonna win. And he does, it's very clever, he does this, and I know being in the card gaming community, we all can understand this. He does this to beg up his opponent so that if he wins, it's that much more impressive that he won over somebody who he obviously viewed as being much better at whatever he's doing than he was, and if he loses, he still gets the satisfaction of being right because he already called that he was going to lose. So the problem is, this guy is a lovable idiot. He's, he's not that smart, but we all love him for it. Like, there are jokes about how he can't read and stuff. It's, it's hilarious. He's, he's a really fun guy to be around, but because he already has sort of this demeanor about him, my friends and I have grown very protective of him, so whenever he cries, everybody rushes to his side. Nobody is willing to believe that this lovable idiot is capable of being emotionally manipulative or of lying about something, and it's created a huge problem within our group. Now, listen here. A claim that I went half of a year without paying any rent is a ridiculous claim. There is no way that that ever happened, and there's something else, I can't get into it here on the off chance that something that I say here circulates back to him, but there's something else about it that just doesn't add up at all. So I pretty much sent him a message letting him know that I'm not going to pay him anything outside of some kind of court case. So uh, right now I'm waiting because I'm giving him a chance to sue me for this money that he thinks that I owe him. Now that might sound insane to you, it might sound like things have gotten way out of hand, they have, but that's just kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I could very easily just sort of roll over, pay him $2,500, which is what he's claiming that I owe him, and I could just kind of give him the money and make it so that everybody is happy, but I'm not going to do that, and it's not really an issue of money. Uh, I could very easily find a way to get $2,500 paid off by the end of the year. That's, that's not really the issue here. It's more an issue of self-respect. Uh, I, I know that I don't really come off as somebody that's like this on stream, but I'm actually a very introverted person. Uh, self-respect is something that I've never really had a whole lot of, and I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to complain about my life or like put myself down or anything. I'm also very narcissistic, go figure that one out, but I'm just not somebody who wants to get into a lot of fights. So normally I'll take the short end of the stick on purpose, or I'll, uh, I'll let people do whatever they want to me, just to make sure that there's no conflict. I hate conflict, so I try to avoid it at all costs. But then when people get to know me, I open up and I become a lot louder, I start speaking more, uh, I consider myself to have a very sharp wit, and I make a lot of jokes, and I'm a very self-sufficient seeming person. And I guess this sort of gives me a persona within my circle of friends that I'm a very self-sufficient kind of person. So whenever there is a conflict within the group itself, and I'm on one side of the conflict, and anybody else is on the other side of the conflict, uh, what normally happens is everybody will sort of rush to that person's side because I seem like the kind of person who would uh, pick fights or who would put people down. And I'm really not, you know, I, I'm... I just seem that way because of the kind of humor I'm into and stuff, so uh, in my circle of friends it's very difficult when I'm in a situation like this where it's me versus another member of my circle of friends because honestly there's there's really nothing I can do or say to get anybody to believe my side. They can pretty much say whatever they want about me and there's not, not a whole lot I can do about it. 
to give an example of what the relationship between me and my circle of childhood friends is like, uh, a couple of months ago we were in a discussion on Facebook and somebody brought up Ruby, like the uh, the animated show by Monty Ohm. I don't even remember how that conversation started, but we started talking about it and uh, one of my friends said, I don't watch Ruby because I, I just can't stand lazy animation. and I said, well, it's not really lazy. Like, it's fair to say that it's bad because it's, like, really choppy. And, like, honestly, it wasn't really uh, it wasn't really that well animated in the first season. So I completely understood where she was coming from there. But I corrected her, and I said, well, it's not really lazy. He actually worked really hard on it, and it was very difficult to get the first season of Ruby made. Yeah, it's not really lazy, you know, it just came out bad. And then she went straight into defense mode, and she was like, Oh my gosh, like, I can't believe it, you're attacking me right now, I, I feel like I, I shouldn't be attacked just because I don't understand somebody's lifestyle or something like that, and uh, as soon as she said that, as soon as she mentioned that she was being attacked by me, everybody rushed in and told me to start calming down and, like, started arguing against me, saying stuff like, you, 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 everybody doesn't have to like the same shows you do, and all this other kind of stuff, and I, I tried to I tried to defend myself. I just said, look, I'm not I'm not saying that she has to like it. I don't think anybody has to like anything. I'm just saying that lazy was kind of not a good word to use there because, you know, she's an artist herself. I'm sure she's worked very hard on stuff that uh, just hasn't come out right. And it's not for a lack of trying. It's just, you know, it's sometimes stuff just doesn't work out. Sometimes you get rushed, so on and so forth. And then, of course, this set her off more. She was like, well, I don't deal in animation, so, you know, it's not really the same thing. And uh, she started giving me all this stuff about how you can't can't really sense intent over words and stuff. And I just, the entire time we're doing this, I'm just thinking, I just didn't want her to use the word lazy. That's it. I just didn't want her to say that Monty Ohm was using lazy animations because he worked his tail off. That's, that's it. I even admitted that it looked bad. <laughs> I just wanted her to not use lazy. And then her her ending thought was okay well uh it's not lazy okay it's just lazy looking you know he has very lazy looking animation which it's probably one of the most immature things that could possibly happen uh, why why would you why why would that make anything better like you can't just move it to lazy looking animations and have that be the fix all i wanted her to say was okay it's not lazy it's just bad <laughs> i think that's reasonable but anyways arguments like that start up all the time in our group and uh like because because I'm somebody who talks a lot and because I'm somebody who um, has a very sort of assertive personality when I'm with my friends, everybody assumes that everything that I do is some kind of attack or like trying to start some kind of fight and it's not. So obviously when something like this happens, uh, this person that I've known forever but is such a lovable idiot that everybody in their group wants desperately to defend them, when he comes and he tells a lie, like I went half of a year without paying rent. Any reasonable person would listen to this claim and go, no, there's no way he went half of a year without paying rent. That's that's absolutely insane. But my circle of friends, there's not much I can do about it. So essentially what's going on now is I've let him know that unless he wants to sue me for that $2,500, he's not gonna get a single penny out of me because I'm not gonna be treated this way. I'm just not going to have it. And this has put me in a losing situation. Uh, there's not really a whole lot that I can do to better my situation right now. Uh, I have to get ready for this lawsuit if it actually does decide to happen. Um, uh, and even if I even if I win this, even if I win this and I don't have to pay him a dime, or if I get out of this and I only have to pay him the $500 that I'll admit I rightfully owe him, it's going to create a divide between my childhood friends and I a lot deeper than what we already have. And... Uh, it's uh, it's not going to end well. And the problem with something like this is it, it's not really going to be the same between all of us, um, even if I do win and even if they do claim that nothing's going to change. Everything changes, especially with something as big as this, because they all very vehemently believe that I owe this $2,500. And um, just because of my personality versus his personality, there's there's nothing I can do to defend myself or to prove that he's lying without taking this to a higher power. And the biggest problem 
with all of this is him and his girlfriend have developed this really neat little trick since moving down here where all they have to do is do whatever they want to me and then turn around to our circle of friends and say oh but I we just want what's best for him and oh we're trying to do the right thing and he just he just doesn't understand and we're uh... you know those very saintly people I hate it it's the worst kind of personality I'm being dead serious right now if you do that kind of crap it's not cool <laughs> just stop it. it nobody likes it but it's this kind of thing where like they they get away with doing whatever they want because they turn to the people who are watching it happen and they just claim that they're just trying to do what's best or like oh they're they're the victims they're the victims in this situation so uh, they're 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 actually just defending themselves because uh, somebody's doing something awful to them to go over the whole living situation too I guess I'll get into that um, so we ended up all three of us moving in I think like three years ago now and at first everything was fine uh, but his girlfriend and I we started not seeing eye to eye on a lot of things like they wanted me to send them permission slips pretty much whenever I wanted to have somebody over which is ridiculous even if it was somebody within our circle of friends they wanted like written permission for me to have them over and I think that was pretty ridiculous we all agreed that the living room was going to be my room so in my eyes and what I still believe uh, we're all three adults if I want to have somebody over and as long as they're not messing with any of their stuff going in their room or whatever I'm not writing permission slips but anyways that's just a small example of what uh, what was going on uh, about January or so rolls around and I get into a pretty big argument with his girlfriend at this point because uh, a friend of mine came over from the group and it just things spiraled out of control because I didn't ask their permission first she just kind of showed up and he was gonna show up hang out and it was gonna be fine it's not like a dangerous person or anything so you know it's not like there's some kind of danger that he's gonna bring some kind of trouble into the apartment he's one of the cutest sweetest little kids you could ever know but anyways after this happened she went on to our group chat and pretty much blasted him in the group chat it was really uncool the way she handled it is essentially the way I'll say it and from that point on everything changed uh, they would stay up two to three nights out of the week um, just talking about how much they didn't like me and uh, how much they wished I would just go back to our hometown um, how much they wanted me out of the apartment and that kind of stuff and uh, I'm, I'm a pretty strong-willed person but uh, I've got to say that's probably one of the roughest things that I've been through like having to stay up like one two three o'clock in the morning just listening to how much the people in the other room hate you especially when one of them is somebody that you've known literally your entire life so that happens and uh, things start getting pretty rough and afterwards um, she ends up coming up to me on a day where he's at work or something and she essentially gives me an ultimatum she says you can either fix things with me and let our friends know that everything is okay between us or I will talk to him about getting you evicted out of the apartment and I was shocked because you know that's that's a really uncool thing to say so uh, I still told her no <laughs> I was still angry I, I still told her no but um, then later when I confronted him about this uh, she all she had to do was lie and say that she never said it and that was the end of it that's about the time that I, I figured out okay this was this was a bad decision because like, she can get away with doing literally anything she wants to and as soon as I call her out on anything all she has to do is go to him and it's gonna create a problem so that that's rough now I'm not gonna go over every single little thing that happened but there are a couple of really big incidents in my eyes that uh, really led to the falling out that we had the first being uh, back when my girlfriend and I first started dating each other we were maybe three or so months into the relationship and they pulled the biggest douche move that I've ever had anybody pull on me in my life it's insane just how big of a prick they can be sometimes so my girlfriend and I hang out once a week we hang out on Thursday we still do it to this day we still hang out once a week on Thursday and at the time the relationship was still pretty new we were still getting to know each other 
And of course, my roommates decided that one Thursday they would get back at me for like the arguing and stuff by humiliating me in front of this girl that I just started dating. They came in, they made her sit outside of the door, and then they stood against the door and yelled a bunch of very personal stuff about like the arguments we were having. Now this isn't kind of personal stuff that would cause a girl to break up with you. It's not like it's not like they yelled all my personal fetishes and stuff. But that that would be weird, but um, they pretty much Okay, you know how when you get in trouble with your parents, how your parents will come into your room while you have friends over and then like yell a bunch of stuff about uh, the st the things that you're in trouble for. I essentially did that and it was it was rough. <laughs> like it was it was seriously one of the roughest things that I I've, I've been through especially with somebody in the group. And they did this on purpose, keep in mind. They they waited until the night where she comes over. They had her sit outside of the door. They stood against the door, and then they chose to have this argument with me because they knew that while she was there, I was not going to defend myself. It was the weakest, most vulnerable point they possibly could have chosen, and they chose it, and it worked. And that was essentially my breaking point. It was the point where I said, okay, this is this is beyond repair. This is not getting better. And I need to look for a way out of this situation. That's essentially what I did too. And then about a month after that, there was another, what I consider a pretty big incident. Um, there's this military guy that uh, they know. And he's a very nice guy. I wanna point out, he's, he's a very cool guy. And if he wasn't already so intertwined with them, I think him and I could have gotten along and we could have been really, really good friends. But things things worked the way they worked. So anyways, he's coming back from being out on a military thing. I don't know, dude. I don't know. He's a military guy, and he came back from military stuff. Whatever. And the day before he comes over, we decide to clean up the apartment, obviously. Um, keep in mind, at this point, we have already had enough arguments that we decided that we would do our own dishes. That was That was one of the agreements. They do their dishes, I do my dishes. And because I wanted to uh, show them that I really wasn't one of the ones causing all the problems in the apartment, I decided to just stop using dishes altogether. I had one plate that I used with one fork, one spoon, and one knife. And those were the only four dishes that I ever used. So the night before, obviously I went, I washed my stuff and I put it away. And then when he comes over the next day, ugh, I can't even, can't even believe this happened even to this day I can't believe this happened they didn't do any of their dishes none of them they didn't even touch them at all okay keep in mind these are the people who told me that we were only going to do our own dishes from now on they would take care of their stuff I would take care of my stuff and that would just be it nobody would be a, <coughs> excuse me nobody would be assigned to do anything I took care of my stuff they care they take care of their stuff and that's it so they didn't do their dishes, and he comes over, and she is sitting there, his his girlfriend, by the way, um, my roommate's girlfriend, she is sitting there coloring a picture, like a 12-year-old. I don't care if it was a school assignment, I don't care what it was for, she's sitting there coloring a picture, and she is going to make this military guy that she invited over do the dishes for her. And then he comes over to me and asks me if I'm willing to help with the dishes. And I, I put two and two together and I figure out, oh my god, they're telling him that I was supposed to do the dishes and he thinks that I skimped out on doing the dishes and now he wants me to help him do the dishes while she sits there and colors in a picture. I, I was livid. I was absolutely livid with the situation. So, you know, what do you do at that point? Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and let their guest do all the dishes by himself. Of course, I go in there and help them. So, I'm in there. I'm doing dishes. And I am raging through these dishes, man. I want these dishes done. I just want to get back to my stuff. I am so angry. I need a video game or something to relax with. So, I'm sitting here and I'm just washing dish after dish after dish. Like, I am just turboing through these things. At the end of this, my military buddy, the dude that got tricked into doing their dishes completely turns on me, tells them that I didn't do dishes at all, that I just sat and watched him do dishes and that he did all of the work and that I was really lazy about it. I just, I can't win. You cannot win. 
So again, there are some little things that happened here or there, but I don't really need to get into everything. I think the only other thing I really need to talk about is uh, during one of the arguments, um, the thought of me leaving was brought up and uh, they they were so they were so full of themselves that they actually told me, well, you know what, you could you could leave if you want to. I mean, uh, her and I we, we could pretty much take care of the rent without you. I mean, you you would be the one that would be really screwed if you left because you know you're alone. Now, what makes me really angry about that statement is the fact that they were right. I was alone out there. I didn't. I was away from all of my friends. Um, obviously, I wasn't gonna force this girl that I've been dating for like a month at that point to uh, to help me with my rent or anything. So, they were right. They were completely right. If I left, I would be more screwed than they would be. But then, um, I got everything paid up in April, and then in May I was going to leave. At the end of the month, I, I told them straight out, like I'm, I'm going to leave. And uh, I'm going to leave before June, and I'm probably not going to pay June's rent. Now, as you can imagine, they weren't very happy about that. They told me, no, you've got to pay June's rent because, you know, we're on the lease. And I just sat here thinking, what happened? I thought you guys were fine without me. Why, why do you all of a sudden need, need aren't I more screwed than you guys? Isn't that, isn't that what we said? Obviously, they probably wouldn't admit to any of this now. They, they've already shown me that they're willing to lie to uh, get out of this situation. So... Like, if anybody asked them about it, they would probably just say that I'm making it all up. And, again, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. But, anyway, so we get to the end of May, and I've moved out, and uh, I have not paid them June's rent, which was $500, which we agreed on. And um, I pretty much just didn't pay them at all. I really didn't want to associate with them at all. And, of course, like I said before, you could easily see how I was sort of the bad guy in the situation, but I was just so tired of everything. Uh, I ended up waiting, and they kept... So, uh, so last year, uh, his girlfriend got a hold of me and said, Hey, don't forget, you owe us $2,000. And I said, mm, No, no. And I, I didn't respond at all because that was that was an in, insane thing to say that I owed them two thousand dollars. And then about a week ago, he gets a hold of me and he says, "Oh, uh, we need to talk about that twenty five hundred dollars you owe me." And then I realized what was happening because I do technically owe them five hundred dollars. They're using this as a chance to get as much money as possible out of me because they know that I can't really go to anybody in the group about this. That's evil. It's evil. It's almost genius. Like, I almost want to give them a lot of credit for it, but because I'm on the receiving end of it, I, it's, it's, it sucks. It sucks. So that's where we're at right now. I don't want to get too much farther into it. Like I said before, there are a lot of little details and stuff that I could get into, but honestly, I don't really think this needs to go on for much longer. Um, that's what's going on right now. I've got a toothache. I can't fix it until I get to a dentist, and until that gets fixed, it's very difficult for me to talk for a long period of time and continue making videos, and I've got to deal with this guy who is trying to get uh, all this money out of me because I'm not going to give it to him willingly, and chances are we will be settling this little issue in court because I think I have what I need to prove that there's no way I could possibly owe him $2,500. So yeah, um, I mean, there's really not much for you guys to comment. I, I guess if you guys have any cool lawyer tips for me that you could give, leave them in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you so much for listening to me ramble. Uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be, probably like half an hour or so, and like the first two minutes were updates. Jesus, kudo. But anyways, again, thank you all so much for watching. Um, that's everything that's going on with me. Thank you for letting me blow off some steam about my personal life. I really hope that doesn't come back around to bite me sometime, but yeah. Um, I think I said thank you like three times. Then I'm going to get out of here. Bye!